Knowing how to use parameters will enable you to remake a character into several different scenes, use advanced styling, unlock Midjourney's powerful anime engine, and how to effectively fine tune your images using A-B testing. And down in the description below, I'll leave a link to Midjourney's official parameter list website. In this video, we'll just go through all the parameters that Midjourney has to offer. And here's the full list here. So we'll be going through all of these in this video. And the next parameter is character reference. So what this basically does is lets you recreate the same character in different scenarios or have the same character but change their overall image. Midjourney makes it really easy if you go over to their explore tab and you can work with all these images here to do this. So let's try to find an image with a person in it where this will work pretty well. So I'm going to use this image here. So once you find one you can go ahead and click this icon here. It'll use it as an image prompt. So you have three options here and you want to make sure you select this first icon here and you can see it pop up use as character ref or reference so we're going to select that so here i'm going to create the, a picture of this woman in a spacesuit in an army uniform and in a chef's uniform and to just do that you can type woman in a spacesuit and then It'll go through and do all three. And here are the results. Created the first set of a woman in a chef's uniform. Did a fairly good job. But the next two, it did not create very good images. The best way to fix that is to use the character weight parameter. So here I'm going to have it recreate a woman in an army uniform. But we're going to use this dash dash cw which stands for character weight and set it to zero so by default character weight is set to 100 in midjourney and what this character weight parameter basically does is at 100 it will use a lot of the original image and if you bring it to zero it will just focus in on the character's face so in this example we just want the character's face so using a character weight of zero should give us the correct images. And make sure to re-add the character reference here. And I quickly did that by going down here and just selecting it here. And these images overall turned out a lot better. So with that character weight set at zero, Midjourney is gonna just use the character references face and nothing else from that image. Now we have the same woman in a, a bunch of different spacesuits and same thing for the second one. Now just that face is now put into an army uniform. And the next parameter is style reference. So what that does exactly is it just copies the overall style and feel of the image. So for example, what we can do is go over to Midjourney's Explore tab and find an image we like the overall style of. And let's go ahead and select this one here. So we can go down to this icon and it'll automatically add it to our prompt bar. But we do need to make sure that this paperclip icon is selected because if you read the pop-up, it says use as a style reference, which is what we want. So if we do the Mustang again, so if we select the Ford Mustang again with this as a style reference, it should include a lot of the design language in this new set of images. And here are the results. I think this turned out really cool. This is, I think, the easiest and best way to create some really artistic looking images like this. Go based off of cool overall theme image and then apply it to an image that you'd want to make. So you can see, let's take a look at this one. It used overall the same colors and overall kind of feel has that orange and blue contrast in it, but it did create a Mustang. It didn't create what was in the image, but the overall colors and feels of what was in the reference image. 
And probably the more complicated parameter to use is image prompts, but it is definitely one of the more powerful ones to use. If we go ahead and again to the explore tab and find an image we want to use, let's say we want to use this one here. What this will do when you adding an image prompt is it will kind of use the image as the starting point and gives Midjourney the inspiration to create another image. As once we find the image, go down to that icon again, but this time we will be selecting the last icon here. And this will let us use as image prompt. When adding your prompt here, you don't want to type what you want Midjourney to change about the image but just type in what you want the image to look like in the end. Don't tell Midjourney what you want it to modify about the image, but still type of what image you want at the end. So here I've typed frigates firing cannonballs at a mid medieval castle. Midjourney won't recreate the same exact photo, but take a lot of inspiration from it. And here are the results. It, it kept the medieval castle with that ocean and kept the flames in there but i'd say the main difference added those frigates ships in the ocean but where the parameter comes in is using this dash dash iw parameter which stands for image weight and what this simply does is tells how much weight you want that reference photo to have and you can see the first set is a lot like my first image almost exactly like it where they're where midjourney didn't even add any ships or free gates to it but the second one i think turned out a lot more what i've envisioned in my head when adding the image weight parameter it goes from zero to three and you might have to do some fine tuning depending on what photo you want in the end and aspect ratio is one of the parameters where there is a couple ways to do it and it is actually built in Midjourney's website here. So you can go over to the settings icon here, go over image size, and this is your aspect ratio right here. So aspect ratio is just simply the size, uh, the ratio of the lengths of your picture. So right now it is a four by three ratio and you can change it to be portrait, square, or landscape. And if you click directly on the number, you can change it to anything you want. So I can do two by three and select the second number, two by six, whatever you want. And you can adjust with this slider here as well. And if you've messed with the numbers too much and you just kind of want to go back to how it was, you can always click this reset button right here. So here I want to create an image of Bora Bora Island. And then I'll also give you guys a quick bonus tip here with right here where you do curly brackets is called permutations. It makes you quickly make two different versions with the same prompt. So if you think back to high school math class, it's very similar to the distributive property. So Midjourney will take your prompt Bora Bora, Bora Island, go to this first one, and that will be your first prompt that Midjourney will generate. And then it'll go back to Bora Bora Island, jump to your second one, and this combined with the second one will be the second prompt. If that sounds too confusing, I'll show you the results in a second here, and it'll make everything much easier to understand. And then make sure to select relax speed because Midjourney does give you a certain amount of GPU hours you can use per month. And if you do relax, it won't use up any hours. And this essentially lets you create unlimited images if you do relax mode. The, the only difference is just how long it takes for Midjourney to create your images. And here are the two sets of images Midjourney made. So each prompt Midjourney will give you a set of four photos. And you'll see the first set is an aspect ratio of three by four with the same exact prompt for both. Looking at the second set of photos is an aspect ratio of one by one. If you want to quickly A-B test in Midjourney, permutations is a really useful tool. So the next parameter is called chaos and you can use it by typing dash dash chaos and then a number from zero to 100. 
So I'm gonna use permutations again to create a set of photos with the prompt colorful sneakers with a chaos of zero and then create a second set of photos with colorful sneakers with a chaos of 100 to show you the difference between the two. Now chaos is one of those parameters where it is actually in the settings here. So if you go down to variety, this is also chaos. So you can see dash dash chaos to the top right of the text bubble there. So if you look at our images here, this first one here is with low chaos or with low variety here. And es essentially what that means in practice is all four of these images are kind of similar, like overall. These are all very, they're all sneakers, the same type of sneakers, except maybe this last one. Um, and it's kind of the same color scheme, same sets of colors. And looking at the second set, this is where chaos 100 was set to 100. So in other words, you could move this slider all the way to 100 and it would do the same thing. Look, comparing these four images against each other, they are very different from each other, even though they are all colorful sneakers, but they don't have kind of like the same theme between each other. So this one is very different from this one. Overall, they're, there's no common theme between any of these. So the next parameter is probably the most important parameter and the thing beginners don't get quite right when they first start using Midjourney and that parameter is called no and to use it you just use dash dash no. The most common mistake is saying you don't want Midjourney to have something in your image. The way Midjourney works is every word you type in it will consider as something you do want in your image. Here my prompt says a blue car without yellow stripes. Well you'll find in a second here is that Midjourney will actually make a blue car with yellow stripes because every keyword in my prompt is going to be considered when making the image. In order to avoid that what you can do is use the dash dash no parameter and then write what you don't want in your image. So yellow stripes. And the way Midjourney reads this, it is it does it by individual word. So here this actually is telling Midjourney we don't want any yellow and we don't want any stripes. If you actually wanted stripes, but you just didn't want yellow stripes, what you would do is just do dash dash yellow and then you can add other colors of stripes. And like always with all of these parameters, make sure you, you use them at the end of your prompt. And here are the results. You'll see with the set of images that say a blue car without yellow stripes, it actually still included yellow stripes. The one where it had the no yellow stripes parameter, it left out the yellow stripes. Now the next parameter is pretty important if you wanna tweak your prompt and your images. So if I just do a blue car again, even though I did the same exact prompt, a blue car, these two sets of images are very different from each other. That's because they have different seeds. And what a seed is, you can think of it as the starting point of how Midjourney created your images. So if you want to just tweak a certain image, knowing how to start from the same seed is very important. And how you do that is you go over to the set of images that you want to get the seed from and you go down to more, copy, and select seed. And now the seed is copied and what you can do now is type a blue car and type dash dash seed and then paste in your seed number. And you'll see now is Although they are different images, you can kind of see the similarity in between the two sets here. For example, these two images are pretty similar. They are different, but you can kind of notice the similarities. And like the first one is of the type, same kind of type of photo and car, or as opposed to using this C down here as these images are very different from each other. 
and the next parameter is actually changing the mode here from standard to raw if you really want to use the syntax for it it is dash dash style and then type raw behind it to change it to raw mode or you can go down you can select the settings here and select raw and what that does is standard mode applies midjourney's artistic and creative filter to it whereas raw mode doesn't apply that filter to it so raw will give you a less art artsy look to your photos if we have the goal of creating a blue ford mustang with flames and we want to make it look as realistic as possible we'd want to use the raw mode we don't have to type anything in the prompt bar because we did select in the settings and create an empty space in between the curly bracket and the comma which will just leave it with nothing for the first one and then the second one would be style raw and here's the difference between the raw mode which is the this first set here the journey is trying to make it look more realistic and the second one is really trying to emphasize the flames there whereas the first set the flames are a little bit more subtle but we can do if this isn't artistic enough for you you can really crank up that mid-journey artistic filter so what we're going to do is take the seed from this so we can get a nice comparison and do dash dash seed in the seed for it go over to the settings and go over to stylization and this is the slider here that tells you how much you want that mid-journey filter to be applied so we have the standard set and then let's crank it all the way up and see what happens here are the results and you can see overall how much more kind of artistic flashy mid journey made those images and the next parameter is the tile parameter which you can use by typing dash dash tile and what this does is create a seamless infinite pattern based off of one image so for example we can type in hardware floor dash dash tile and this will create an image of one single picture but it can be stacked next to, e to each other to create an infinite pattern and here i created four different images that can be copy and pasted right next to each other and kind of make an infinite canvas or pattern using this same image and if you guys are having trouble getting it to turn out just right go over the settings and just click the reset button in the settings like this and reset in mid journey if it's not turning out quite right usually resetting it back to the default settings fixes it the next parameter is called weird and it does exactly what it sounds like it overall makes your images look weird and it can get very weird looking to test that out i have typed in a prompt called broccoli with a face and to use parameter you just use dash dash weird and and then a number from zero to three thousand you can also find this in the settings with this slider here the second slider can go from zero to three thousand and you can easily do it that way and here's the results before and after and the top one's having more of a out of place, especially the last one, a lot more weird than the first set. If you're a big anime fan, you'll like this next parameter, which is called dash dash ninji. And this is mid journey's more anime Eastern aesthetics based engine. So here I've typed in a prompt dragon where it will create the default mid journey image and the second one will have that anime image and the results kind of speak for themselves the first set is the anime based one and the second set is without the anime filter on 